So we just arrived in the Lofoten Islands, and to be honest, I've been out of it for three days with the nastiest cold you could ever imagine. I guess just like the climate change from Singapore to here just crushed me, and I've had no energy for two days. But we've arrived here, and how can a place like this not just fill you with all sorts of energy? It is just crazy here. So we're here. And uh, this is going to be like a two-part series, I think, of the best photo locations in the Lufthansa Island. This cold is just crushing me. Wow. It is starting to get better though, and I will, st why is it so bright? <laughs> I'm leading a photography tour here in the Lofoten Islands, and uh, yeah, it's a small group, VIP location scouting trip, and I thought what I would do is just share with you guys the locations we are in case you come here, and maybe guide you through some of the photos that we shoot, and just enjoy this place, because it is unreal. I mean, look at this, it's just, it's just crazy. And there's just so much to shoot here. This is definitely not a classic shot like you see in the Lofoten Islands a lot, because there's no red houses or cabins or anything like that. It's just a simple reflection. You've got this beautiful bit of beach here, and the water rushes up on it, kind of gets trapped and creates a mirror. So you have the sea, and then you get this beautiful mirror effect here. And it's working really nice. It's a simple shot. I'm doing 30 seconds to get some motion in the sky. And yeah, really good start here in the Lofoten Islands. Skagsundan Beach is about so much more than just this reflection shot though. There are little waterways leading to the seas and views. There's rocky foregrounds to play with. And there's just a lot to work with in general. Give yourself at least a sunset here, probably two. So it's almost sunrise and this is the second location in the Lofoten Islands that we're shooting. It's called Nusfjord. It's definitely more off the beaten path compared to places like Raina and farther south on the islands which are photographed like crazy. There's no other photographers here except for my group and uh, I don't think we're gonna get sunrise light but it is really, really beautiful here. Baby. Uh, it's low tide, and so kind of all the seaweed and foreground is exposed here in their little bay. And so I've come down right on top of it all, and I have a pretty simple composition with some of the seaweed and rock in the foreground, the red cabins in the background, and we're actually getting some purples and blues in the sky as well. Probably should have a polarizer on, but I left it in the hotel. I'm sick, don't blame me. <laughs> but I left it in the hotel. But yeah, even without a polarizer, I think it's coming out nice. There's actually a lot of different compositions to be made in News Fjord. There's the rocks where I started the morning, which is pretty obvious. But if you wander past the manic seagulls and the hanging cod, you'll end up at a viewpoint up above the main harbor, and there's definitely some shots there to be had as well. So we ended up getting some beautiful light this morning, some really nice cotton candy skies. The seagulls are awake, but man, I'm so, so tired. So I think we're gonna go back to the lodge, do some photo editing, I'm gonna have a nap, and we'll go out again at sunset. It's about an hour and a half before sunset, and we found a location that's 
I didn't see anywhere on any list or anything like that when I was scouting before, but that's the town of, well, it's A with a circle on it. Ivan thinks it's pronounced Oi or O or something like that. I don't know, but it's basically the end of the Lovaton Islands. It's the very, very end. And just before you get to it, there's a tiny little parking lot on the side of the road, a tiny little area to stand, and there's beautiful, beautiful view. So it's not sunset yet, but we're still getting a really, really cool image and something that's a little bit unique. The weather ended up being pretty rough yesterday, so we didn't really shoot anything yesterday evening or this morning. But it's cleared off again, and we're at a place called Unstad Beach, and it's known also locally as the Surfer Beach. There's great waves, even though it's about, you know, one degree right now, there's a surfer in the water. And I do think, though, this is probably a good place to shoot surf photography and that sort of thing, there is also a lot of landscape photography potential here as well. We're not going to shoot landscapes. We're going to try to photograph the surfer who just took off and just got hammered by that wave. But yeah, we're going to try to take this surf photo or some surf photos and then move on to another location. Unstead like Beach is underrated. We came here for the surfers, but I think if there's one location I'm itching to get back to for some landscape photography, it's here. A lot of photographers sleep on Unstead Beach. Give yourself at least one shoot here. So I don't think I got a photo of that surfer, but it was a really cool place. And there is a coffee shop there at the surf shop, I think it is, that does the best cinnamon buns in the world. So if you're heading to that area, definitely go check out that shop. We're here at our sunset location, which is called Utaklev Beach, Utaklev Beach. And it is stunning. There's all these black rocks, there's some crashing waves, there's some beautiful peaks in the background. A lot of rain came in last night. It's a little bit warmer today, so there isn't a lot of snow, which kind of sucks, but it is still really, really beautiful. And I think we're gonna have some fun here. I think we're gonna get down on these rocks and uh, yeah, shoot some photos. At Utaklev Beach, there's actually a really famous photo spot, the Dragon's Eye. However, when we were there, there was a massive photo group hovering over it, so I didn't bother. But here's a screen grab of a Google image search to show you what it looks like. I should also mention that the rocks here at Utaklev are really slippery, so take it slow, or you might end up breaking your camera gear or worse. It's like day three, I think, in the Lofoten Islands, and we're finally photographing the most classic location. Uh, a lot of people confuse this for Rhine, but Rhine's actually a, the bigger town, a little bit farther. This is Hamnoi, and this is shot right on the Hamnoi Bridge. I think there's two compositions that are kind of classic here. One is to go with a vertical frame right on top of this, where you get these red cabins in the bottom of the frame, and then right above them you have this beautiful peak. Or you can move farther down the row, of photographers. You can see there's probably about 30 photographers here. You can go farther down the row and put the red cabins on the right hand side, balanced nicely with the, the peak in the top left hand side. So uh, it's a classic image, but it's a classic for a reason. It's just unbelievably beautiful. It looks like the views in prison. <laughs> it's like, oh no, the views in prison. Faster, faster! Bye! Bye! We love you! 
So the light is just absolutely beautiful this morning. And uh, yeah, we're getting some light over the view as well. But I do think this type of location, or this location specifically, you almost need a little bit of drama here. Some waves crashing against these rocks to really give yourself some like an outline to the scene. And it's just a little bit too calm. But yeah, it's been fun photographing through the kind of the cage here. Classic Lofoden shot at Hamnoi Bridge is worthy of both a sunrise and a sunset. So after some really great light in the morning, we tried again in the evening and we retreated again to some really interesting light. Although we were almost blown off the bridge by the winds. We've had some crazy weather today. It was really windy, um, but now it's almost sunset and it's chilled out a little bit. We've come to a place near that classic view at Hamnoi. I think it's called Sexidoi or something like that. And you've got these old yellow cabins. So you kind of have the red cabins in that place. This is like the yellow island. And if the light cooperates, I think this could be really beautiful. All these yellow cabins, those peaks in the background. If we get lucky enough to catch some light, yeah, this could be spectacular. Sacrosoi is beautiful, and there's so much to photograph here. One of the classic shots here is a pretty simple photo of one of the yellow cabins in front of the pyramid-shaped peak. Unfortunately, there were a couple cars parked in front of it, so I had to get a bit creative with my composition. The weather's been nasty for a couple days, so we haven't been out shooting as much as I'd hoped. We're here now, we're trying to get one last sunrise in at a place called Hawkland Beach. Hawkland Beach isn't far from Utaklev Beach, which is just on the other side of this tunnel. But it's really cool because you do have um, a beautiful beach up there, and you have some mountains in the background, you have some rocks in the foreground. I think there's some shots here. I don't think the weather's gonna cooperate, as you can see, but uh, we're gonna try anyway. So that's it from uh, the Lovettson Islands. I'm sorry that I was sick and just miserable the whole trip, but the trip itself wasn't miserable. It was so much fun. It was a really good group of people and we did get some good images despite, despite the fact that I was walking around like a zombie basically the entire time. Um, some last quick bits of advice. If you're coming to the Lofoten Islands for photography, I think Leknes is a great area to base because you're really central. You can get anywhere in like, in like 30, 40 minutes. And just be prepared for a lot of photographers because there are a ton of photographers up here in this area right now. And it wasn't an issue at all. All the photographers were great. Everybody was accommodating. It's just, yeah, there's a lot of sticks out. We didn't see any tourists, I don't think, without tripods. It was that many photographers. Um, but overall, I think the Lofoten Islands are totally worthy of all the attention they're getting. They are spectacular, they're fun to photograph, and it's just absolutely beautiful. I will be back here in June, and I promise in June, on that midnight sun trip that I'm doing, there'll be more videos. So there'll be like three or four videos from here. So um, stay subscribed to the channel if you wanna see more Norway content in the future. And there's gonna be some Patagonia content in the future as I'm heading down south with Thomas Heaton and a crew of people to, uh, to go photograph some stuff in Patagonia. That's coming up. As for right now, 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 it's time to head to Wales. So on the next episode, you're gonna see me in, in Wales, back in the UK on assignment. So I'll see you guys there. Peace.